Hello guys, welcome back to this channel and thanks for viewing this video. Today we are going to develop a very small Java GUI program that is going to be a digital watch. So I'm going to show you how to develop a digital watch in Java Swing. Okay, so let me start by declaring a various instances that we will need. So we will need a button and I'm going to use this button to actually output, you know, the hours and the minutes and the seconds. So I'm going to declare that globally here because I'm going to use it inside my constructor. I will also need integers. Okay, so the first one will be HRS for hours. So I'll say zero. I will need an integer for minutes. So I'll say mean like this. I'll say zero. And I will also need second, I will instantiate that to zero and then I'll write semicolon. So that's it. So now here, I'm going to instantiate my button. So I'm say btn that new j button. So for now, I'm not going to put some text in here. What else I'm going to do is that I will add this button to the frame. So I'll say this, that add btn and then a semicolon. So this will still not show because I need to set the bounds. So BTN and set bounds. So I'll say 150, 150, 250. So if I run, I'm supposed to have a button on my friend. Yeah, so there you can see the button showing. So now what I need here is that I'm going to need a method that will allow me to run my digital walk. So I'll say public void run like this. In here, I'm going to run my program. So I'm going to use a while loop statement. So by saying while true, and in here, I'm going to start writing my code. So I'll say calendar, that's a Java Swing class, calendar, like this, assignment operator, calendar, that get instance, and same code. That's it. So if you recall, we declared and instantiated some integer variables here, hours. So I'm going to get the hours from the calendar class that we have here. So what I'm going to say, our will be calendar, calendar that get, and inside here, I'll say calendar that hour underscore of underscore day. So this is going to get the hour of the day, okay? And store it in this integer variable. So it's going to return an integer value the hours. So one other thing we can do for the hours here, we would say that uh, if the hour is strictly greater than 12, then we will start decreasing the hour. So I'll say like this. So that's what this means. So after working on the hours, capturing the value of the hour of the day, we can now capture the value of the minutes. So we say mean. So for the minutes, I'll say calendar that get and in the brackets, I'll say calendar that minute. For the seconds, uh, that's what we call it. Sec here, I'll do the same thing. Calendar that get calendar that second. This is going to capture the second. This will capture the minute, and that here will capture the hour of the day. Now we can also work on the format. Okay, so we're going to use a class called simple date format. We're going to call it date format new simple date. Format. So I need to import the simple date format here. So it uses the string value as a parameter. So HH here is for the hour, MM is for the minutes, and then SS would be for the second. So we are going to use the calendar to convert that into to get the time actually. So I'm going to say date, call this date, calendar that get time like this. So once we have the time here, let me first import this class called date here. And down here, we have to convert the time into a string. Okay. So I'm going to add another variable here that will be of type string. So I'll say time underscore string like this, semicolon. I can instantiate that by giving it an empty string. And then in this method, I'm going to use that very string here. So I'll say time underscore string. Then I'll say date format. Okay, so this is going to get the format. And then I will format it according to the date, the value that will be stored in this particular instance. Okay, so this is going to get the time from the calendar. And it's going to format it 
according to what we said here, and it will store it in time underscore string. So now, as I told you, we're going to use this value stored in the time underscore spring here to actually set the text of our button. If you can recall here, button does not have any text. Okay, so what we're going to do here is come outside here and I'll say public void. I'll say show time, open and close the brackets. And inside here, I'll say VTN that set text and that will be time underscore string. So now what we need to do is that we need to come here and write show time because that's the method used for printing out the time, okay, on the button. Let me run. It's still not showing. So you know what we're going to do? We are going to add an interval here. Uh, in order to do that, we will add another instance, a thread instance here. So I will say thread. I'll call it thread and I will instantiate it to null like this. So I'll come in my method here and say thread that sleep. So this is going to add an interval and I'm going to do it in milliseconds. So here, what's saying I need to add to surround this by try and catch. Okay. So what I'm going to do is that I will surround all of this in a try and catch like this. So I'll cut it, put it in here so that now this catch will be like this so that's it i still cannot see the hour showing so what i'm going to do is that i'll come to the constructor here so i'm going to say red new i'll say this okay so i'm getting this error because i need to implement so here i will say that this class is implementing runnable and this so now you can see there is no error around I can I still cannot see that so I'm going to say thread here that start and then semicolon so now when I run you can see that the hour the minutes and the seconds showing on the button you know one other thing I can do here is to actually set the font for the button say new font so that's font old 24 when I run there you can see the hour show I can also say btn that set focusable false like this maybe increase this if i run there it is i can say this that get content in that set background on the color that black so here i'll say btn that set background and color that red semicolon and btn that set foreground color that white semicolon so if i run so there you can see the digital watch has been created. So send it here, run, red, run, that's it. So guys, I hope this uh, video was informative and uh, don't forget to like, to share and subscribe to this YouTube channel for more videos like this one. Let's meet in the next one.